lovely. Um, thank you very much. And hello, Brown Hills and Willenhall. It's really lovely to be with you. And thank you for inviting me to uh, lead worship this morning. Um, it's been a really odd one this week because I thought at the beginning of the week, I knew what I was going to do, which was really reusing some material I had used for the Methodist Women in Britain dedication service. Some of you would have been there. And then um, in the middle of the week, I don't know about you, but this thing about hitting the wall six months after lockdown, I felt really, I had, I've had a really tough week and I thought, oh no, I need to address that in worship, something around hitting the wall and carrying on and God being with us. Um, but you know, that didn't feel right either. And earlier in the week when I'd been sitting at this desk and I look out of a window, you can't see it, but it's st straight ahead of me, there'd been some wild geese flying past the window and I'd noted that and I'd written something about it on Facebook and I thought you know the wild geese are calling me and I need to follow so yesterday friends I had a lovely day I had a day when I didn't do any emails or administration I just get, gave the day over to preparing for worship I've been a bit self-indulgent because it is my birthday so um, I've prepared lots of things that feed me in worship I hope they'll feed you there's some poetry there's some creative things. Uh, there's a new song from Singing the Faith to Learn. Um, and uh, so I'm, I'm sharing that with you this, this morning. Uh, we've already recognised the glorious cacophony when we unmute and we sing. Um, so what I'm going to suggest for these hymns is it, it, I'm quite happy, not because I think I've got a good voice, but I'm quite happy to do a solo um, if you want to keep yourselves on mute and just sing along with me, but please do sing along. Um, and similarly, there'll, there'll be a time when I invite you to unmute, but otherwise we'll, we'll stay muted. And those wonderful people who are doing the Bible readings, um, when you see it's the reading, please unmute yourself and uh, carry on because I don't know who's doing what. So I'll just share my screen now. These are not easy times. They are times of anxiety and uncertainty and I've certainly been feeling that as I've sat at my desk for hours at a time answering emails and attending Zoom meetings. As I've looked out of the window, I have often seen against the clear blue skies this week wild geese flying in V formation across the sky and it's as if they have been calling to me, calling with the wildness of God. So today for worship I have decided to go on a wild goose chase and I invite you to join me. Let us pray. Holy God, we thank you that we can glimpse your glory in the autumnal abundance of your creation. In the living word, Jesus, our saviour, in the recorded word of scripture and in the inspiration of the Holy Spirit in the ordinary and extraordinary moments of our lives. In this time of worship, capture our imagination. Take us outside our comfort zones to the wild places of your spirit where we encounter your challenge and need your courage. Open our eyes to the signs of the kingdom already in the midst of us, even as we wait for the day of its fulfilment, when your justice will reign, when tears will be wiped away and death will be no more. Amen. And we sing.
I posted something about seeing the wild geese through the window and a couple of days later I got an envelope um, with a note in it. It had been very carefully anonymised so I've absolutely no idea who it's from but it included a, um, a sort of big postcard on which was this picture of wild geese. And the person who'd sent it said, when I read your Facebook post, I realized I had something in my possession that I thought I ought to pass on to you. It's a beautiful picture and it's by a Baptist minister called Chris Duffett. And he uh, writes in explanation that he lives uh, near a place where a lot of geese gather. And when he goes out on walks, he hears the geese. And um, he's reminded of the spirit of God because uh, according to tradition, wild geese uh, were a symbol for the Celtic Christians in these lands, particularly in places like Scotland and Ireland uh, many centuries ago. They saw the wild geese rather than or as well as the dove as being a symbol of the Holy Spirit. And if you've ever used material from Iona, that's why it's called um, wild goose songs. And so Chris uh, painted this beautiful picture. And if you count the geese, there are nine. And uh, that's because of the nine spiritual fruits. On the other side of the postcard is a really lovely prayer by the writer Sheridan Voisey, who you might sometimes hear on Pause for Thoughts on the radio. And it's a, a breath prayer. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, I invite you, whilst you're still muted, to say it along with me. And the idea is that in the bold type where we're receiving the gifts of the Spirit, we say the words and then we take a breath in. And then when we're saying releasing words, we then take a breath out. So this also acts as a sort of prayer of confession and of healing. So let us pray. Lord God, fill me with your Holy Spirit. I receive your love and release my insecurity. I receive your joy and release my unhappiness. I receive your peace and release my anxiety. I receive your patience and release my impulsiveness. I receive your kindness 
and release my indifference. I receive your goodness and release my ungodliness. I receive your faithfulness and release my disloyalty. I receive your gentleness and release my severity. I receive your self-control and release my self-indulgence. Amen. We hear our first scripture passage from John chapter 3. Now there was a Pharisee, a man called Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. Jesus replied, very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. How can someone be born again when they are old? Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at me saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the spirit. Amen. Amen. I really did have a lovely day yesterday. It was very healing just to be out in the beautiful um, out, outdoors. You know, it's a gorgeous day here. It's quite windy, but blue skies. Um, and um, I went for a walk. Uh, I needed an excuse to go for a walk, really. Um, so I went on a feather hunt. And I know you're a circuit that's very creative. You've got lots of messy church and other sorts of uh, things. So uh, and Messy Church, of course, is not just for kids. Messy Church is for all of us to exercise our creativity. And so I've got a short video here showing uh, some ideas that you might like to do. If you're going out for a walk this afternoon, um, then here's some ideas to take with you. Feathers are a lovely symbol of the Holy Spirit. They're so light and blown by the wind so yesterday I went out on a feather walk. They're not too difficult to find, but you do have to keep your eye out for them. You don't have to go way out into the countryside. I found my best feathers about five to ten minutes walk just from my house on the pavement. Make sure you wash your hands well if you've come back having picked up feathers from the ground. Then there's various things you can do with them. You can just simply hang the feather up as a reminder, maybe on some sparkly thread. Or if you have some beads, maybe you can thread some beads onto the hanging thread to give a little bit of weight and sparkle. If you have some fairly thick paints like acrylic, you can try and paint some of the feather quills, make it look like you've taken them from a really exotic bird. And then find somewhere to hang your feathers, somewhere that where they might catch a breeze, somewhere where they will catch your attention and remind you to look out for the Holy Spirit of God around you. So every time now I look at those feathers hanging from the lampshade in my sitting room, I shall be reminded of the Spirit of God and I shall also be reminded of the Brown Hills and Willenhall circuit and you'll be in my prayers. 
we're going to hear two more passages of scripture now. Meanwhile, Jacob left Beersheba and traveled towards Haran. At sundown, he arrived at a good place to set up camp and stopped there for the night. Jacob found a stone to rest his head against and lay down to sleep. As he slept, he dreamed of a stairway that reached from the earth up to heaven. And he saw the angels of God going up and down the stairway. At the top of the stairway stood the Lord and he said, I am the Lord, the God of your grandfather Abraham and the God of your father Isaac. The ground you are lying on belongs to you. I'm giving it to you and your descendants. Your descendants will be as numerous as the dust of the earth. They will spread out in all directions, to the west and the east, to the north and the south. And all the families of the earth will be blessed through you and your descendants. What's more, I am with you and I will protect you wherever you go. One day I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have finished giving you everything I have promised you. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I wasn't even aware of it. But he was also afraid and said, What an awesome place this is. It is none other than the house of God, the very gateway to heaven. Amen. And from the book of Acts. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. In those days, I will pour out my spirit, even on my servants, men and women alike and they will prophesy. Amen. Amen. Right, I'm just going to stop sharing for a bit here, if I can do that. There we go. Not so much a, a sermon as some thoughts, really. Um, I realise that thus far, when I've been talking about going on a wild goose chase and chasing the spirit, uh, you, you might think, oh yes, I know exactly what Rachel's talking about, or you might think, um, I've not a clue what's going on here. Um, so I thought it would be useful really to try to establish at least a common sort of language. So what I'm talking about, if I talk about chasing the spirit, um, chasing the wild geese using Celtic um, imagery, is what I think every Christian uh, desires, which is to have that sense of the presence of God, um, have some sense that the veil between earth and heaven has been just set aside for a moment. You get some sort of glimpse, some revelation, some epiphany, some sense that you're not alone in this universe, that God is, is with you. And I think this is something that, that Christians um, long for, uh, something that Christians may expect to happen, but I suspect it's another area where, a bit like prayer, we might feel a bit guilty because we think everyone else is having these revelations and it never happens to us. And this morning, so I want to do a bit of sort of exploring of, of that really. Because whilst we can establish a common language, so what we're looking for is some experience of the divine in our lives. I think the ways in which that might happen are as varied as the number of Christians that there are in creation. I don't think there are any standard experiences. Though I think we sometimes talk as though there are. If I think of the sort of classic expectation, if I say, you know, oh, is, is God speaking to you or whatever, then the classic expectation might be something like um, the story of, of the boy Samuel in the temple, you know, where 
uh, a god who is probably an old man with a grey beard is sort of going, Samuel! Uh, and so you're expecting, you know, that Jem's sitting there on his sofa and he's expecting God to go, Jem, I have a word direct for you. And, um, you know, that, that clearly is um, authentic Christian experience, a word from God uh, that makes sense, that tells you what to do, that you can relate to the rest of the community, job done. Except that if that is the standard of what it means for God to speak to you, I've never had that experience in the whole of my life. I've never had an experience of, as it were, uh, a vision of God saying something logical and sensible to me. And if you have, then that's wonderful, treasure that. But if you haven't, I think I really want to say that doesn't mean to say that you're not having experiences of the Holy Spirit. If we look elsewhere in scripture, um, we find that the way that the, the Spirit of God is communicated is often really weird. Jacob's dream about angels going up and down ladders, I suppose, is at the more sensible end of the spectrum. And at least in that dream, God speaks directly. But we've got Joseph and his fat cows and his thin cows. We've got Ezekiel and his valley of dry bones. We've got Jeremiah at the prophet's house. We've got Peter on the roof when that great um, tablecloth comes down filled with unclean animals that he's, he's to eat. Frankly, friends, this is all a bit bananas isn't it it's a but we might be familiar with it because it's in the bible but in terms of the sorts of nature of the revelations um they're really quite odd and i think this should give us some courage for when odd things seem to happen but we know it's god to claim that as an experience of the holy spirit i remember one of the earliest things I can remember where I thought, oh my goodness, I've just met God. I was cycling along the camel trail. I was on holiday with my family and we were cycling along and um, there was a hedgerow along the side. And I, I looked into the hedgerow and there was a bird in the hedgerow and my eye met the bird's eye. And I thought, oh my God, goodness, God has just looked at me. Now, I confess, I did not share this with many people because I thought they would have said, you're bonkers. What do you mean? God looked at you from a hedgerow, looked at you in the eye of a bird. How can you possibly know that? What does it mean? I didn't know what it meant and it lasted only a second. But I just knew that God was in that moment. There have been times when I've had experiences in rather more uh, formal settings. I remember being in the centre of a, of a labyrinth in Manchester Cathedral a long time ago now. I was in the centre. I had for a while in prayer been sitting down in prayer and having an, an image before me of sitting opposite Jesus. Jesus was cross-legged on the floor. I couldn't see his face. He was cross-legged on the floor, um, always wearing, you know, the, the type of thing Jesus wears in uh, pictures you've seen in Sunday school, a sort of shift in a cloak. And um, suddenly in the middle of this labyrinth, I saw that the Jesus sitting opposite me was pregnant massively pregnant nine months and i knew that jesus was carrying the whole world and actually i'd heard a lot about god being neither male nor female but but i'd never really that had been in my head not in my heart suddenly i knew that i was looking at the female side of god god carrying the whole world nine months pregnant and furthermore as i looked at the crossed feet i could see the marks of the nails, God's suffering. It wasn't logical, it didn't make sense, there were no words, but I just knew it was an authentic experience. Before you run away with any sort of idea that I'm like a, a, a modern day Julius of Norwich having religious um, visions and dreams all over the place. Let me tell you that it's not like that at, for me at all. One of the other things I think I've learned about chasing the spirit, wanting to meet God, 
is that it's very, very common for God to go AWOL, sometimes for months, sometimes for years. I have on a retreat sat myself out at the end of a promontory over the sea and told God, I'm not going back until you have showed yourself to me. That's never worked. <laughs> I've always given up before God has and, and gone home for my tea. I once knew a very faithful Christian woman. I had some conversations, the real privilege conversations of being with her in the last days of her life. And she talked at great depth. She was the sort of person who you sort of imagined um, would have felt very close to God all her life. But she told me, she said, I've only ever had one spiritual experience. She knew exactly where it was. It was back when she was in Lancashire. She was sitting in somebody's kitchen at the beginning of a house group. And she said, I had the unmistakable sense of the Holy Spirit of God just coming and sitting on my shoulders. It only lasted a moment. And she said, but it was undeniably the spirit. And she said, I've lived the rest of my Christian life on that one moment of revelation. I found that tremendously hopeful, friends. Tremendously hopeful. So what I want to say to you today really is um, you may this may all be very familiar to you or this might be quite new and if it's new and you're interested I'd say find people to talk to about it very happy to have a conversation with you myself but let's not box in our expectations about what it means to meet God if you are in any situation from standing on the top of a glorious mountain to simply washing the dishes and you feel a stirring of the heart, some form of just momentary moment. And you know, you know that that's God, but you couldn't make sense of it. You couldn't tell anybody else about it. I want to say, have confidence to claim that, to treasure it, to really own it. And if you find yourselves thinking some really weird things and thinking, I'm sure God can't be in that. Remember that in Acts, it was promised that God would speak to us, not in fully made up sentences with proper punctuation in the Queen's English. But in dreams and visions that sometimes we won't be able to understand, maybe without the help of others, maybe until time unfolds. Just to finish this week, as I say, I just saw that V of geese flying through the air. They just went past in a matter of milliseconds. But I knew God, God was in it. And from that cascades of grace have opened up. First of all, that person um, sending me this wonderful picture through the post. Yesterday, it led me on the wild goose chase that really lifted my soul. And today, it's led me to lead this worship that I hope may also touch at least some of your souls too and lead you on your own wild goose chases later on. Amen. And if you want to share anything about your own experience of the spirit, then um, you can always do that on chat um, or you can find time to do that after the service. We're going to sing again now, so I'll have to go back to sharing my screen. This one was a new one to me, um, so if I go wrong, um, don't worry about it, but it's lovely, and um, I think Zoom services are a good opportunity to try something new. This is by Shirley Arena Murray.
I think someone is leading our prayers of intercession. Hello, that's us this morning. Oh, wonderful. Hello. Good morning, everybody. Today, for our intercessional prayers, the only thing we need to join in with is our hands. So make sure you've all got your hands attached. Have a quick look. Are oh, they still there? Yes, they are. So we'll be using, this is a, got a response, and the response is going to be the Makaton sign for thank you. So we need to do thank you, God. So for those who have dialed in, the thank you is you touch your bottom lip or near it, and then put your hand away. Thank you. And then for God, you just point up to the sky. So it's thank you, God. So... When I say, for these times, can you respond with, thank you, God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we come to you today, we thank you for our hands. As we look at our hands, your hands, we think of all the times that we have worshipped you. The hymn books we have held, the service sheets, the piano keys pressed, the claps of applause and the praise for you. For moments when we have raised them in joy and celebration and in awe-inspiring thanks. For these times, thank you, God. As we look at our hands more deeply, we see the lines, the scars, the wear and tear, the marks from our life. We think of the tough times that they and we have been through. Times when we've clenched them into fists instead of offering them to be open and forgiving. For times when we've used our hands unwisely, we are sorry. The times when we recognise that we've made a bad choice or a bad decision. For these times, thank you, God. We think of the world, the different coloured hands, the newborn hands and the damaged hands. The hands of our leaders and those who bite their nails as they try to work out what is right for us in these uncertain times. For those hands that wipe tears away, for those that labour for little reward, for those that beg and reach out for help. When these hands are falling and growing weak, strengthen them, Lord. Be alongside them and take their hands in yours. Fill them with your strength, hope, encouragement and love. For these times, Thank you, God. We pray for our church communities, for those hands that we used to shake at the door, for those serving hands that poured our drinks, 
for those that brought the offering plate to us. Help us to know that we can still connect and serve people. We can use our hands to greet others with a wave or to write encouraging words of support, to pick up a phone and call or to collect some items of shopping or a prescription. Thinking about times when you have been a willing servant and for these times, thank you, God. We think of those known to us who are struggling and who need your love to surround them at this time. We can write their names in the palm of our hands with our finger. Let's just take a moment now to write those names on our palms. As we write, we ask you, Lord, to be present in their situations. Let's write those names now. Lord God, we offer these names to you in prayer and we lift these people and situations up in the presence of our friends from around the circuit and beyond. We think about our own needs, which are already known to you. Thank you for being there for us and let us celebrate times when we know that our prayers have been answered. For these times, thank you. God. Amen. 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 And we're going to share in the Lord's Prayer now. If you'd like to unmute yourself, then we know that uh, everybody will be out of sync, but we will hear all the different voices and that in itself will be a joy. You can say it in whichever form you're most <coughs> comfortable with. So let us pray. <laughs> Our Father, who art in and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive trespasses against us. And lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. Yours is the kingdom, the power, the glory. Amen. Wonderful. Just got a couple of things to finish with now. First of all, um, uh, talking about the fact that if you're going on a wild goose chase, you're going to have to keep going because the geese keep on moving. And then one of my favourite poems, a poem by Mary Oliver, uh, before we share in a well-known hymn. You might want to mute yourself again if you've unmuted so we get the sound quality better. Last Sunday morning, I was just running along here with some friends um, when we were surprised by a huge cacophony of noise. Um, we peered through the bushes as we were over on the canal towpath and could just see on this body of water um, geese flying in, geese taking off, um, huge numbers. <laughs> It reminded me of a motorway service station, a very busy motorway service station with people arriving and leaving on busy journeys. I've come back here on my wild goose chase and I hoped to capture some of that flurry and movement. And of course, here are some geese, but they're all sailing very contentedly by. And that's true to my own experience of chasing the Spirit of God. I might have had a real sense of the spirit one day in one place, but returning to it does absolutely not guarantee you're going to be able to replicate that spiritual experience. Instead, we always need to be on the lookout, always in every place, for the wildness of God surprising us.
You do not have to be good. You do not have to walk on your knees for a hundred miles through the desert repenting. You only have to let the soft animal of your body love what it loves. Tell me about despair, yours, and I will tell you mine. Meanwhile, the world goes on. Meanwhile, the sun and the clear pebbles of the rain are moving across the landscapes, over the prairies and the deep trees, the mountains and the rivers. Meanwhile, the wild geese, high in the clean blue air, are heading home again. Whoever you are, no matter how lonely, the world offers itself to your imagination, calls to you like the wild geese, harsh and exciting, over and over announcing your place in the family of things. <laughs> Let us pray. God of power, may the boldness of your spirit transform us. May the gentleness of your spirit lead us. And may the gifts of your spirit equip us to serve and worship you now and always. And the blessing of God, Spirit, Son and Father, remain with us forevermore. Amen.